What's up guys? And today I am back with another video. And what I wanted to talk about today was a video I saw on Twitter that aired many years ago back in 2014. It shows a video of the actor Wendell Pierce on Bill Maher's talk show. And for those of you that don't know, Wendell Pierce is an actor. Having trained at Juilliard School, Pierce rose to prominence as a character actor portraying roles on both stage and screen. He first gained recognition portraying the role of Detective Bunk Moreland in the acclaimed HBO drama series The Wire from 2002 to 2008. So with that being said, this black male actor has a lot of knowledge when it comes to politics and societal issues as well. And as we know, Bill Maher has been known for his controversy and from what many like to say that he likes to stir the pot when it comes to political issues. And in this particular video, Bill asks Wendell about his take on black violence in America, and Wendell had this to say. You have to realize that, yes, the involvement of violence in black folks uh, comes from that long history that the president was talking about, that um, you, you, we have to remember that we learned from some of the best. They had some white boys came over here that, uh, that did the first beheadings in Point Coupee, Louisiana, where I'm from. Slave insurrection, that was the way you dealt with it. Tuskegee syphilis incident. We're going to see how black men die if they have syphilis, but we pretend we treat them with penicillin, and we're just going to watch the pathology of how they die. Now, that wasn't back 200 years ago. That was 1930 to 1974. We're talking about giving these wonderful blankets to the Native Americans infected with smallpox as they walked on that trail of tears just to see how they die and to eliminate their population so we can take all of that land. So the violence that is in America has come from a very learned position that was brought here by some Caucasian folks. All right? So now, when it comes to the NFL, when it comes to the NFL, you have black men who have taken advantage of this opportunity to go there. So for every one, two, or three that may have been in the news because of violence, there are another 2,000 that deport themselves as gentlemen, as husbands, as fathers, and, uh, and as great professionals. So we must remember them also. Uh, okay. So, but, 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 you know, and, and but yes, people are responding to that. They, they see that image of that black man. You know, one of the uh, MacArthur Foundation fellows, they just... One is uh, a, a psychologist, uh, Jennifer uh, Eberhardt from Stanford, who deals with racial uh, uh, messaging and, and in, in inequalities that people are, is either learned or subconscious that when you see me in a certain situation, you think violence. If they see you in a certain situation, people don't see violence. So the image of the black man being violent has been perpetuated for a long uh, time. A rebuttal from the whites. Well, <laughs> let, let me say this. <laughs> Okay, so you just saw the video where the actor gives his take on violence in America and how he states that the violence that is seen from blacks has been learned from whites in America. He also states that when it comes to representation and propaganda, that the media loves to zero in on the negative representation of black people and not the positive ones such as the psychologists and others as well. I love how Wendell clocked him on the facts about societal issues and how the media likes to spin a narrative when it comes to black issues. You could tell that when he started to speak very eloquently about the issues, that Bill and the others on the panel were not prepared for such intellect in Wendell's diction. I loved every minute of it because you can tell that a lot of these white platforms, like I stated in my earlier videos, love to showcase ignorant black men on these platforms to make them look bad and make fun of them. They want to put the most unqualified black men on these networks and ask them hard-hitting questions only to end up making them look bad. I mean, let's not forget about the infamous Cameron interview. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks for being here. First, when you saw that video of Diddy, Cassie uh, in that hotel, did you recognize that Sean Combs? Um, what I want to say, first of all, when I seen the video, um, everything in the video is egregious. I'm against. Uh, I don't support. Uh, all the charges that's alleged against him. I don't support any of that traffic and minors, uh, domestic violence. I'm totally against it. So when I seen the video, yeah, I was kind of upset with it. Uh, no, being that I know him, he's not necessarily a friend, but yeah, I was upset when I seen it. But did, did you recognize everything him? I just said, did you recognize I, that I, I kind of anger at all from your experiences? I don't know him like that. What did you mean? Do I be recognized? Did I recognize him? I seen him. What do you mean my experiences? I seen them and I thought I thought it was disgusting. I didn't do a zoom in to see if it was really him or nothing, but he admitted it was him, so yeah, it was him. What did you think about the apology that he gave in that other video? Ain't me for this the apology ain't for me to decide for Cassie. 
What, what I what I think about it don't matter. He ain't do nothing to me. Cassie need to need to ask Cassie if she accept the apology. I told you how I feel. I said what I said. I want to play a conversation that you had on your podcast back in September with Mace. Mm -hmm. Listen. Yeah. When you had your mm, record that's... deal, why did you take me to Biggie Smalls and not um, Bad Boy? Man, it's almost going to bring me to tears to say this. I just, being that I saw you as, as such a good friend, I wanted to put you with somebody I knew with. Thank you, man. I really appreciate that. A lot of people ask me that on Instagram, yeah, I knew man. Don't have me. That's why I'm here crying and shit, it. man. I don't instantly want to get emotional knew, in here, man. Instantly, I knew Biggie would, would do right by you. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? I mean, is there, um, is there something known in the industry about how Diddy treated his artists? So I'm going to get some cheeks after this horsepower joint. Um, I'm just going off what Mace said. Mace took me to Biggie. I don't really know Puff is like Mace no Puff. So I appreciate what Mace said. And of course, uh, that's my brother. So if he felt that way, then he felt that way. I can't really tell you how Puff moves or anything like that. Mace may know better than me because he was signed to Puff. I wasn't. But my show does come on at 8 a.m. Eastern on YouTube. It's called It Is What It Is. And y'all make sure y'all check it out. I mean, I might get some more information out of Mace from there. But for me to tell you mm -hmm. how Puff acting and all that, I don't know. I never was signed to him. Yeah. What about the industry in general? I mean, so many people have pointed out that Diddy couldn't get away with this stuff if there weren't a lot of people protecting him. Do you think that's the case? Who the talent agent for this joint? Like, you think I'll be sitting around watching what Diddy do and all this? I didn't know this was a Diddy joint that invited me to. Yo, who? Yo, who booked me for this joint? All right. Oh, Violin. I'll be Cameron. sitting around watching Diddy and all that. Yeah, thanks. Man, come on, man. This thanks for crazy, joining man. us. Thank you for your time tonight. Yeah, yeah, yo, thank you. Thank you for having me. You enjoy.